it's in something what, I'm going to want cases, to do. In what cases do you think it would be a better form than taking the blood out, mixing with the ozone, you know, oxygen mixer, and then give it back to the patient? Actually, I like the major autohemotherapy, I, and, and I do hyperbaric ozone. I like that the best. Mm. We take blood out into a bottle. Let's say hey, this is the bottle. Blood mm. goes up. Ozone gets pumped into this under pressure. Under pressure, it gets shaken up, and then the blood goes back down. Mm -hmm. um, that's called hyperbaric ozone. That's my favorite. Mm, okay. The standard blood therapy is MAH, major autohemotherapy, right. where they take blood out in a plastic bag. Here's a little jar of glue. It's plastic, and they shake it back and forth like this, and then it drips back in under gravity. Mm. I don't like that. I never did. Mm. It gave me the heebie-jeebies putting ozone and in blood into plastic bags. Mm. Big heebie-jeebies. I never did it. I always use glass bottles. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody doing it shouldn't be doing it. That's my personal opinion. There are some practitioners believe that direct ozone injection actually give you extra benefits compared to mixing it with blood first. Of course, uh, and I teach that. Uh, okay. Uh, it does. What happens when you just give the, the bolus of, of gas into the blood versus mixing with the blood first? The downside I told you is scarring veins and the chest pressure. Mm -hmm. It's If you do it right, it's not a major issue. My wife and I decided early on that we were not going to use the concentrations that Howard was using. He was using 55 micrograms per cc initially. <clears throat> and I think he's down to 40 now, largely because of vein issues. Mm -hmm. Our maximum <clears throat> is 30. I don't like to go above 30 because saving veins is important to me. The chest pressure, uh, that just goes away uh, because the the gas is absorbed. Now, you're asking me, why might it be better? Because European research years ago showed that intravenous oxygen gas was highly therapeutic. Hmm. Highly therapeutic. Wow. So just the gas itself, even without ozone, if it's oxygen, you're going to get a positive therapeutic effect. Throw in a little bit of ozone, and you're going to get more of a therapeutic effect. Intravenous oxygen gas has been shown to reduce inflammatory enzymes. Hmm. One is called 15 LOX1, 15 lipooxygenase 1. Another is an enzyme associated with atherosclerotic heart disease. It gets reduced as well. Mm. These treatments, and I, I think oxygen gas alone does it, but certainly with ozone it does, it increases the level of something called prostacyclin. And it's called prostacyclin because it was originally discovered in the prostate gland but prostacyclin is the body's most important vascular lubricator. Mm. And it is in balance with a highly inflammatory prostaglandin called thromboxane. You want a ratio like this, prostaglandin and thromboxane down here, and ozone improves that ratio. If you get more thromboxane, it does exactly what it says, thrombosis. Extraordinarily pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And ozone improves that ratio, which is what we want, improving circulation. So that's yet another mechanism of the benefit of ozone. Ozone has all, so that's DIV. DIV has the advantage of intravenous oxygen gas. Well, <clears throat> Howard was shocked because at an ozone meeting, I actually came out and supported what he did through a presentation on what I do. Now, he claimed that his DIV was better than anything he ever saw in ozone. He said, my method just gets results and major, major autohemotherapy doesn't, or it just takes forever to get it. And I said, you're right. I never liked simple gravity ozone. I like my method, which was hyperbaric ozone.
-hmm. Well, after I looked into this and I looked at the physics, I realized that when you have a bottle and you pressurize that bottle with gas and you pressurize it, the laws of physics say that the oxygen gets dissolved into the fluids of the blood. So when that blood goes back in, you're getting a DIV treatment as well mm -hmm. as ozone. So when Robbins, he and I went like this for a long time, I said, guarantee you, Robbins, I get better results than you. And he said, you can't. And it's because he thought I was doing gravity MAH. Mm. He came to my office for training and he had a treatment. He said, oh, my God. He said, you're not doing MAH. You're doing hyperbaric ozone. And yes, he bowed. I'm <laughs> friends. We're friends. If you ever come to a workshop that we do together, you'll be laughing the whole time. Oh. He, and, and he bowed. He said, yes, you're right. You're getting better results. This is a better treatment. But it's more expensive to do, and it leaves more medical waste. Yeah. So Robbins does what he does because the only real waste in that is a very small 27-gauge butterfly. Mm. That's it. And when we went to Sierra Leone, some of those who decried DIV, and it was a political matter, it wasn't a medical or a science matter, they lambasted us politically for doing DIV. Well, look, when it comes to Ebola, which is extraordinarily contagious, if something's contaminated, I don't want to have all this blood contaminated medical waste. At least with Robin's method of mm. DIV, your contamination is a single butterfly mm -hmm. eel that looks sort of like this. And that's <laughs> all it is. Yes, Only I... It's about one tenth the size of this. Right. Yeah. So there's minimal medical waste. It, that's a huge advantage and it's highly effective.